Never Stop Learning, week 188. We're going to take a quick look at the eyedropper tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. All right, so here I've got this image loaded, and I'm going to be bringing up some colors out of this image using the eyedropper tool. You can find the eyedropper tool over here in your tools panel. Just clicking on it once is going to activate it, or you could hit the I key on your keyboard, and that's going to bring it up for you as well. All right, so the way this guy works is if you want to grab a color to use, just hover over it and click on it once and that's going to load it up into your foreground. All right, you could also click and drag, use this heads up display. Once you find a color you want to use, release, and that's the color that's going to be loaded into your foreground over here. You also have a modifier key. If you come back into your document, hold down the alter option key, click on a color, it's going to load that color into your background instead of your foreground. Now you have two colors loaded up and you could hit the X key to swap between those two colors. All right, so, so far we've just been sampling colors inside of this image. You could also sample colors outside of the image and even outside of Photoshop, but there's a little bit of a trick to that. Now, I didn't know this trick for a long time, so let me share that with you right now. The way you do it is you click inside your document, and then you drag outside. So let me uh, bring this guy in a little bit. All right, so let's say I wanted to grab a color off one of these icons. I'm going to come back into my document, click once, and then drag this out. Now it's starting to pick up colors off this user interface, my desktop, and when I hover over this folder, you see I got that blue loaded up into my foreground. If I hover over this guy, I'm going to go ahead and release, and now I got that color loaded into my foreground. So just keep that in mind. If you want to sample a color outside of Photoshop, all you have to do is click inside of your document first and then drag it out. So you might want to grab a color off of a website or maybe an image that's loaded up in a different application. All right, so Let's talk about a little bit of painting workflow. I'm going to hit the B key to bring up my brush tool, and I want to load up some colors to paint with. All right, so you would think you'd go to the I key to bring up your eyedropper tool, find the color you want, click on it, and then hit the B key to go back to your brush tool and then paint with that. But there's a quicker way to work. What I normally do is I hold down the Alter Option key, click on a color I want to use, and when I release, I already have the brush tool loaded up, so I could go ahead and paint something out. All right, let me undo that. Another way to work is you hit the I key and you hold that one down, find a color you want to use, click on it, and when you release, you still got that brush tool loaded up and ready to go. All right, now let's see what's the difference between these two workflows. If you hit the Alter Option key, you get the eyedropper cursor, but nothing's going on over here at the top along your options bar. I'm gonna go ahead, choose a color, and then release. All right, if I hit the I key and hold that down, Check it out over there on the top. Now we have the options bar loaded up with a bunch of different settings that's going to change the behavior for our eyedropper tool. I'm just going to pick another color and then release. All right, so if you want to change the settings, you're probably going to want to hold down the I key. But if you just want to pick up a color really quick, you're probably going to use the Option or Alt key on your keyboard. All right, so now that you know where the options bar is with those different settings, let's see what those settings are all about. I'm going to hit the I key on my keyboard to bring them back. Now, the first thing we have over here are our presets, but I'm going to leave that alone for now, and I'm going to talk about that later on. Over here, we have sample size, and currently it's set to uh, point sample. So let's see what that point sample is talking about. I'm going to zoom in until we get to the pixel level. I want to be able to see nice big pixels. All right, so let me see, right around here, maybe a little bit more. All right, cool. So when I have this set to point sample, any of these pixels that I click on, that's the color that we're picking up and loading into our foreground. So even though this pixel is a little bit lighter than this pixel, we're able to tell the difference with this eyedropper. Now if I come back over here, click on this little drop down menu, that's going to give me some other options. I'm going to switch over to 3x3 three three average. Now let's see what we're talking about with 3x3 three three average. If I click on this pixel, it's not going to give me the color of this pixel. Same goes for this guy right over here, and so on. Now what is it talking about when it says 3x3? Three I'm going to bring up my marquee tool to help us out here. All right, so I'm just going to click and drag. And so far I got three pixels, four, but I want to go back to three right here. So I got three there. I'm going to go down two, three. Right in here, so I have three going across, three going down. So there's really nine pixels in there. So I'm going to deselect that, hit the I key on my keyboard. Now if I click on this single pixel, it's not sampling that pixel. It's sampling all of these and averaging them out and giving me this color over here in my foreground. So it's just the average of those nine pixels. 
Now if I come back over here, go to 5 by 5 average, I'm going to come back down in here, and use the marquee tool again to show you that one more time. All right, so right in here, I'm going to click and drag. I got three, four, five pixels. And I'm going to go down two, three, four, five. So it's five across, five down. All right, let me deselect I. When I click on it, again, we're not sampling this single pixel. We're sampling an average of the five by five pixels around it. All right, cool. So back over here in the drop down menu, you'll see you have all these other options. So depending on your workflow, depending on the project, you might want to choose one of these other options. In my workflow, I'm usually working with 3x3 or point sample. Every once in a while, I'll go over to 5x5 average. All right, so I'm going to get out of there, zoom back out. All right, next we have sample, and currently it's set to all layers. So what that means is it's going to sample all the layers in my document to create the new color that we're going to be picking up into our foreground. Now, that's helpful to me because sometimes I work with layers that have transparency applied to them. So several layers combined could create one color that I need to sample. Now, if you want to change the behavior, just click on this little drop down right here and you have some different options available to you. You could change it over to current layer, current and below, all layers, no adjustments, and you could set it to current and below with no adjustments. Now the no adjustments thing, it's going to ignore any kind of adjustment layers you have set up there. And over here where it says current layer, it's going to ignore any of the transparency, but it's going to pick up the color on whatever layer you have activated. All right, so let me get out of there. Next, we have this option right over here. Now, this is going to be for your sample ring. This is that heads up display you saw earlier. While I have this button pressed down, I'm going to click and drag, and now it's going to bring that up for us. All right, so if I come over here, you see that there's two rings right here on my screen. The outer ring is a gray ring, and that's just so you can kind of separate your image from your colors. Now the inner ring is actually cut in half. The top half is going to show us the new color we're choosing and the bottom half is showing us the color that we currently had loaded. So this is going to allow us to see if we're making a drastic change or if we're making a more subtle change like we are in here. All right, so I'll release that. If that ring gets in your way, just depress this button and now when you click and drag, you're not going to see that heads up display anymore. I like to work with it, so I'm going to turn that guy back on. All right, so let's go back over here to the start. If I click on this little drop down, you see this is where we load up our presets. Currently, I don't have any presets, so let's create one. All right, if you take a look at my options bar, I have it set to 5x5. Five five. It's going to sample all layers, and let me just turn off this ring real quick. All right, so let me save this tool preset off. I'm going to click on this guy right here. This is going to allow me to create a new preset. And I'm going to give it a name of 5x5, five five, all layers, no ring. All right, I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Now, if this, is, if this is a setting that I want to use again, I just got to click on it to activate it, and I'm good to go. All right, so let's load up a new one, 31 by 31 I'll come over here, choose current layer, and I'll bring up that ring. All right, I want to save this guy off because maybe it's one that I use often. I'm going to call it 31 by 31 current layer ring. All right, except that. Now you can see that I could quickly change the behavior for this tool. And I could keep loading on more and more. I could manage those guys by coming in here and choosing these different options in here. All right, so if you make a bunch of changes over here and you just want to go back to how this tool was by in the beginning, just come over here, right click on this, and that's going to reset that tool for you. All right, so feel free to play around with this because you could always go back to how it was in the beginning. And there you have it, folks. That's the eyedropper tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014.